Hello, Yajong. My name is Jua Lee, and if you are a student, you can call me Miss Lee. I am a teacher in St. Paul, and uh, I'm very happy to be collaborating with Hmong National with their project Read With Me. And today I'm going to be reading a story, uh, a Hmong folktale story, and it's called 91 Gurgur. Okay? And I bet many of you have read this story when you were in elementary school. So I am in elementary school. I teach fourth grade. Um, so I will be reading this in English first. And then maybe another time I will be reading this in Hmong. Okay? So let's start. Nine in one gurgur. Okay? It is told by Blia Shaw and uh, adapted by Kathy Spagnoli. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, I will be turning, holding the page like this so you can see the page, and I will be reading in the back, okay? Many years ago, when the earth was nearer than the sky than it is today, there lived the first tiger, okay, first tiger. She and her mate had no babies, and so the lonely tiger often thought about the future wondering how many cubs she would have. Okay. So here's the tiger. Okay, She's very lonely and wonder if she's going to have babies. Here's tiger. Tiger decided to visit Shao, the gray god who lived in the sky, who was kind and gentle and knew everything. Surely Shao could tell her how many cups she would have. Tiger set out on the road that led to the sky. So here's Tiger and here's the road going up the sky. She climbed through forests of striped bamboo and wild banana trees, past plants curved like rooster tail feathers, and over rocks shaped like sleeping dragons. Do you see those shapes? Here's a fern and sleeping dragon. Here's the picture. At last, Tiger came to a stone wall. Beyond the wall was a garden where children played happily under a plum tree. A large house stood nearby, its colorful decorations shining in the sun. This was the land of the great Shao, a peaceful land without sickness or death. Here. Now your jaw, 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 your shao lu che. Okay. Lu che zhong gao nyan da. Do not know your shao, shao, and this is tiger. Shao came out to greet tiger. The silver coins dangling from his belt sounded softly as he walked. Why did you come here, Tiger? he asked gently. Oh, great Shao, answered Tiger respectfully. I am lonely and want to know how many cups I will have. Can you count to see how many cups Shao says she would have? Let's count. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cups. Shao was silent for a moment, and then he replied, Nine each year. Oh, how wonderful, purr tiger. Thank you so much, great Shao. And she turned to Lee with her good news. One moment, tiger, said Shao. You must remember carefully what I said. The words alone tell you how many cups you will have. Do not forget them. For if you do, I cannot help you. Here's Tiger going back down. At first, Tiger was happy as she followed the road back to Earth. But soon she began to worry. Oh, dear! She said to herself, my memory is so bad. How will I ever remember those important words of Shao? She thought and thought. At last, she had an idea. 
I'll make up a little song to sing. Then I won't forget. So Tiger began to sing. Nine and one, gur gur. Nine and one, gur gur. Here's Tiger. Down the mountain went Tiger, past the rocks shaped like sleeping dragons, past the plants curved like rooster tail feathers, through the forest of striped bamboo and wild banana trees. Over and over she sang her song, nine and one gurger, nine and one gurger. This is how it's said right here. Okay. Here's Tiger going down the mountain. As Tiger came close to her cave, she passed through clouds of tiny white butterflies. She heard monkeys and barking deers. She saw green striped snakes, quails, and pheasants. None of the animals listened to her song except one big clever bird, the yew bird. Hmm, said Bird to herself. I wonder why Tiger is coming down the mountain. Sing that song, Granny, from ear to ear. I better find out. So Burr soared up the ladder, which was a shortcut to Shao's home. So where's the bird? Right here. She heard the tiger singing. So she wanted to find out what was she singing about. Here's the bird and Shao and his wife. Oh, why shall, asked Bird politely. Why is Tiger singing over and over? Nine and one, gurger, nine and one, gurger. And Shao explained that he had just told Tiger she would have nine cups each year. What do you think about that? Do you think the bird's happy about that? Hmm, let's find out. Here's Shao telling Bird. That's terrible, squawked Bird. If Tiger has nine cups each year, they will eat all of us. Soon there will be nothing but tigers in the land. You must change what you said, oh Shao. I cannot take back my word, sighed Shao. I promised Tiger that she would have nine cups every year as long as she remembered my words. As long as she remember your words, repeated Bird thoughtfully, then I know what I must do, oh great Shao. What do you guys think that the bird will do? What do you think? Let's find out. Here's the bird flying back to earth. Bird now had a plan. She could hardly wait to try it out. Quickly, she returned to Earth in, to search Tiger. Here's Tiger. And here's the bird. Bird reached her favorite tree as old grandmother's sun was setting just in time to hear Tiger coming closer and closer. Still singing. You can sing with me, okay? Nine and one, grr, grr. Nine and one, grr, grr. Tiger was concentrating so hard on her song that she didn't even see bird landing in the tree above her. Look at Tiger. Does she look happy? Hmm, I don't think so. Suddenly, bird began to flap her wings fiercely. Flap! When Bird's big black wings, who's that? cried Tiger. It's only me, answered Bird innocently. Tiger looked up and growled at Bird. Grr, grr, Bird, you made me forget my song with all your noise. Tiger's not happy, is she? No, nope, not at all. There's Tiger and the Bird. Oh, I can help you, chirped Bird sweetly. I heard you walking through the woods. 
you are singing. One and nine, gurgur. One and nine, gurgur. Oh, thank you, thank you, bird, cried Tiger. I will have one cup every nine years. How wonderful! This time I won't forget. What did the bird do? She tricked Tiger, didn't she? Last page. So Tiger returned to her cave, singing happily. One and I gurgur, one and I gurgur. And that is why the people, that is why the Hmong people said we don't have too many tigers on the earth today. The end. And that is the end of the story. Thank you for reading with me. And I'm going to read this in Hmong in another video. Okay, so come back and watch Miss Lee. Okay, bye.